Hey, what's happening gamers? I'm K-Wing and it's time to go hunting. You know, carve up some beasties, make lovely new hats, armor, and swords from their remains. That's right, it's time for the Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate Review for the Nintendo 3DS. Special thanks to our friends over at Capcom for sending a review copy early, because had I done this on release, well, it would have taken a long time. I am 35 hours in and still haven't scratched the surface of this game yet. It is beyond meaty. Now the game begins with a beautiful cinematic introducing us to our hunter on a sandboat type thing. Anyway, the entire game actually revolves around this narrative to tell its story and showcase the monsters, which I'm not gonna lie, so cool. Okay, so after we stopped the big sand monster guy and returned the old man's hat to him, he's uh, pretty happy about that and lets us join his caravan. Then of course, it's adventure time! You know, fulfilling various town people's requests, finding hundreds of items, and meeting brand spanking new monsters, along with some old. Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate brings new additions to the table too, like being able to play online without the use of piggybacking off the Wii U. Hooray for progress! Online players can team with three other hunters, just like before. And personally, I've only played a few hunts online, but aside from fighting insane monsters like that new dark dragon everyone's talking about, I had a lot of fun playing, as you can see, aside from, you know, my gameplay. Now the connection was smooth sailing all the way. Like previous games, players earn a hunter rank online, you can battle in arenas for bragging rights, and join guilds. Oh yeah, and the uh, egg hunting quests, yeah, they're back. Yay. But that's not all! Capcom has also introduced two new weapons, the Insect Glaive and the Charge Blade. Now the Insect Glaive partners you with, well, a bug, whom steals essences from the boss monsters, while giving various boosts like healing, defense, speed, and attack. Targeting different parts of the monster will steal different colors or essences for your player. However, red and orange does the most amount of damage. You can attack the monster just by using your staff if you want to, but why handicap yourself? Instead, increase your bug's attack power and work with your insect friend to take down the beastie. The Charge Blade is the next new weapon, and it's kind of like the axe-sword combo, though now it's a sword and shield plus axe, which is way better. While not my favorite new weapon, I like this better than the Switch Axe. It's faster, and the charge attack is nasty. Well, when, when you pull it off. This weapon is perfect for fast strikes and hard hits to dizzy the monsters, and transformation speed is actually pretty decent. Still, the Insect Glaive wins because it ties in with our next new feature, leaping onto monsters. By using this insect staff, players can pole vault onto the beast. For everyone else, well, you need to find a cliff for some uneven terrain to jump off from. But it works. Sort of the same. By swinging your weapon in midair and hitting the monster, you start a minigame where you stab it repeatedly and hold on for dear life. I really do love this new feature. Unless, of course, you're playing with friends. Trust me on this, when one of your teammates is riding on said monster, don't attack it. Dance, sleep, do whatever you have to do, just avoid it, and you'll still keep your friends. Well, internet friends, anyway. Aside from jumping on the monsters, Capcom has changed the environments to be more vertical, creating the biggest environments ever for the series. Literally! Though the water levels introduced in Try and Ultimate 3 are now gone. Anyway, the focus of this game is basically parkour hunting, running, climbing, and lots and lots of jumping. In fact, it'll make you think of the song Jump. I'm sorry, but that reference totally applies here. Monster Hunter 4 has a lot of improvements over the previous games. The camera works better, and on the 3DS no less. I know, right? It's easier to lock onto the monsters like never before and avoid their attacks. Though I admit, I do miss the Wii U's simple item touchscreen. Minor gripes for me, that's just a Monster Hunter staple. Creatures still don't have health bars, so you need to watch the monster's behavior very carefully, like, you know, when they lose a tail, start limping, or sleeping. Otherwise, during a capture quest, well, you might just kill it a lot. 
To be honest though, I really enjoyed Monster Hunter 4, minus the egg quest, because they're still boring and I just hate fetch quests so much. Oh, and I did fall asleep grinding some monsters by myself because the music doesn't have that same gravitas that Try did. Seriously, it put me to sleep. What more do you want from me? I would strongly recommend collecting armor online with your friends instead to counteract my argument and just use armor cores to level up, you know, the great Jagi set. You'll be fine. Unlike the previous installments, the single player experience wasn't too bad. And the cutscenes was such a great way to introduce all the new monsters. It makes the hunts more personal and exciting when, you know, they had their own introduction. Village quests and shops are back too, but they've changed a little bit for this game. Instead of staying in the same town the whole game, you're part of a caravan that travels all over the place to new locations. And just like typical Monster Hunter, upon finishing said tasks, forging better armor and weapons, you move on to the next zone, except now you literally move to the next zone. Also, just like online play, Capcom has added more crazy monsters in free roam, or as they call it on the 3DS, Expedition Mode. Here you can face beasties up to G-Rank. Yes, G-Rank. Don't count on slaying these things until you're super OP though, all right? Instead, try and finish the subquest and run for your life. Because on this open hunt, you could run into many of them at once. I've lived long enough to, like, uh, injure one guy and see him flee, and then another guy comes out of nowhere and kills me. Still, there's lots of shiny things to find and G-Rank weapons, too. And, yep, that's right, G-Rank items are back as well. And I'm gonna stop there. Yes, I didn't talk about the new monsters or the cats, DLC, etc. Why? Because I'm gonna be playing the whole game on my LP channel. This is but an appetizer. The main course is coming soon. Besides, I haven't even customized my cat yet. He's still like a level 13, I think, and does fine, even with the crappy gear he has, so. He doesn't have a tank yet, though. Yes, you get tanks. In closing, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate is the best entry yet. Other than some of my minor gripes, which most people could probably counteract anyway, Capcom has actually improved the series and released it for a handheld no less. Usually the handhelds, like the PSP, leaves one feeling unsatisfied while hunting. Not on the 3DS. Oh, and this Monster Hunter game also gets an additional point for all the cool DLC coming and past monster quests coming soon as well. Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate gets a 9 out of 10. Oh, and uh, before I leave, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate is perfect for beginner hunters and extreme veterans alike. So it has something for everybody, and you'll find hours of enjoyment no matter what your hunter class is. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to see a blacksmith about some upgrades. I wish you all good hunting.